One of the many reasons people visit the northeast Florida city of St. Augustine is for its amazing architecture. Four decades before the English colonized Jamestown, and more than half a century before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock, the Spanish established at St. Augustine the nation's first enduring settlement. With the exception of the famous 17th century Coquina Fort on the bayfront, little remains architecturally from the early days thanks to the British burning most of the city to the ground in 1702. Thankfully, later buildings were constructed in the spirit of the early settlement. For more than two centuries, this home has been owned and operated by generations of enterprising women, something that continues to this very day. It's a unique part of the story of this place, which the guides here love to showcase. Today, we've been invited inside the Jimenez Facio House Museum, one of the best preserved and most authentic second Spanish period residential buildings in the city. Coming up, we'll introduce you to our new friends, Julia and Ryan, who take us on a tour and tell us why this structure is so important to preserve for future generations. All of that and so much more straight ahead from St. Augustine. Julia and I am the social media and communication specialist here at the Jimenez Facio House. And I'm Ryan Brennan. I'm the garden and facilities manager here at the Jimenez Facio House. This home was built in 1798, so it is over 223 years old. Um, and it used to be a boarding house uh, for most of the history, uh, but we will show you a little bit prior to the boarding house era and just kind of walk you through all of the things that have happened in the house. So when it was first constructed in 1798, it was the second Spanish period here in St. Augustine. It was built by a man named Andre Jimenez, who is a merchant here in town. So the house was a house, but it also doubled as a business. So him and his family lived up on the second floor. Down here on the ground floor, he ran a general store as well as a billiards hall, but we'll get to that later as we go through the house. So this is the first room that you'll see if you take a tour of our museum. We really highlight the archeological finds that we've had here throughout our 70 or so years as a museum. We're one of the most well archaeologically excavated sites here in St. Augustine. We've had over 15 different digs on the property. We interpret that and use it to recreate the boarding house that you see here today. But some of the things we find date all the way back to Native American groups that were here before European contact. And we have modern things ranging all the way up to the 1930s that we find. Uh, because of the historic nature of our museum on a rainy day, the grounds will turn over, the sandy dirt, and I'll be in the garden, nails, buttons, beads, other things will just pop right up out of the ground, so I'm finding stuff all over the place. It's a, it's a pretty cool place. The biggest find we've had here on the property is our Caravaca Cross. It was a white bronze cross made in the 1650s in Caravaca, Spain. It would have been made to commemorate the end of the Black Plague in Europe. It'd be worn as a little pendant on a necklace. Um, 
is used to promote fertility, prevent rabies, and prevent lightning strikes. Coral Halbert, St. Augustine archaeologist, found that on our grounds here in 2002 when we were excavating behind our kitchen there. We usually do have it in our gift shop um, on display, but we were actually struck by lightning, which, funny enough, is one of the things it's supposed to protect from. Uh, so it isn't on the property right now, but we will be getting it back in the next few months or so. So we are currently standing in the recreation of Andre Jimenez's general store. Here he would be selling pretty much anything you may need, ranging from salt, pepper, seasoning, alcohol, tobacco, nails, gunpowder. We know from our historic records that the biggest seller out of this store would have been our alcohol. The reason for that was the billiards hall located directly to the right of us. You could purchase a bottle of wine, carry it to the room next door, have someone open it, serve it, shoot pool with your friends, carry on for the afternoon. Uh, but this store was pretty profitable, so once the Jimenez family left the house at the end of the Sp second Spanish period, the ladies who turned this into a boarding house actually kept the general store running. There would have been a doorway right onto Avalese Street so people could come in and out, check out the different goods we had for sale. And we actually had merchants in this building all the way up until the Dames purchased it in 1939. We had different merchants, artists, weavers, other people who were in the different rooms selling goods to the general public. Now, if you look on our wall here, you'll actually see indentations in our coquina. Don't worry, those are there on purpose. You would have actually used those to create a shelving system. So you'd put a small block of wood in each of the holes then lay a, large, a longer 2x4 across the top, creating your shelving system so you can display all your goods for everyone who comes in looking for different things to buy. We have this uh, pig wine skin. So this once was a real pig. Um, once it passed away, I guess you could say, they would clean it out um, and then they would put an extra layer uh, on the inside so it wasn't too gross in there. Uh, but it was said that they would store alcohol in this and it was kind of a celebratory piece if we were having a celebration, uh, you would definitely be, uh, be served from the pig. His name is Joseph Langle. Um, St. John's County history, you'll see the Langle name pop up here and there. He was a merchant here in Northeast Florida. One of the main things he was selling was slaves. So he was in that industry. Uh, we have this lovely portrait of this individual, um, but it does give us the opportunity to talk about slavery in Northeast Florida. It was a little different than your average plantation slavery during the time period. Of course, we started out in the second Spanish period. Sec or Spanish slavery is an economic system rather than race. So an African American or an African could own a Spaniard and vice versa, depended on the economic standing. 1821, we become a United States territory here in Florida. And that all changes. We take on this uh, plantation style slavery. But here in St. Augustine, there's a little more of an urban twist, smaller uh, size staffs. It would be predominantly female here working in the house. But that's really one of the stories that we've taken on here in the boarding house in the past couple of years is telling the stories of the invisible hands who really made this place function. We do a specialty tour usually every January um, and it goes for about a month and it's called I Lived Here as well. Uh, last year we had a female perspective on it, the year before it was just a male. We're still trying to work out what we're doing this year, but basically uh, they portray different uh, enslaved people that would have lived on the property throughout you know, the years, so uh, just the changes and they again just uh, you know, portray those six people, uh, some of which were actually documented to have lived here. Welcome into our dining room. Um, included with your price of staying at the boarding house, which was about $20 per week per person, take into account at the time the normal normal salary was only ten dollars uh, so we were known as a more upscale boarding house but included with the price of staying here were three meals a day all served in this area of the home uh, the largest meal actually came around 1 30 and it was a full nine course meal every single day so basically the equivalent of thanksgiving on a daily basis and when you see the size of our kitchen it is amazing they were able to create that amount of food every single day all served in here uh, if you look above the tables we do have our hanging devices they're called punkas and i'll come over here to show you how they work during each and every meal someone would 
work them and create, first of all, a little bit of airflow. Uh, but they were also used to keep the bugs off of the food because, again, at the time, there was no way to really preserve food. So just a little bit of air, again, would deter the bugs from actually landing on your meal. Andre Jimenez was 34 mm -hmm. at the time that he married Juana Pelliser, who was actually 15. Uh, Juana is a very interesting individual here in St. Augustine history. She was the daughter of Francisco Pelliser, who was one of the leaders of the Menorcans. Him and two others were actually the ones who fled the plantation in the middle of the night to come flee for their freedom. We have a mix of Menorcan and Spanish heritage that form the foundation of our household here. And that's definitely another side of our history that we're looking to get deeper into is our Menorcan heritage. I think the whole town of St. Augustine as well is looking to embrace that unique story that we have here. And, you know, it's right here in our boarding house. You're currently standing in our guest parlor, which was an area uh, where our guests typically after mealtime would maybe get to know one another, uh, partake in some gambling, uh, definitely a little bit more of a masculine area of the home, I've been told. Uh, but women and children were allowed in here if they really wanted. We have a game called Lou, which was very popular at the time. It's very similar to poker. So each one of these mother of pearl pieces had a monetary value. Unfortunately, the exact rules have slightly been lost to time, but people do still fill in the blanks and it can be played today. But this is definitely an area where sure many of our guests would have spent a good amount of time. Florida was a popular destination for people with tuberculosis. Doctors at the time believed our warm humidity would actually help with your respiratory illness. Later found out they were very, very wrong about that. The humidity actually kills you faster. You need to go to dry and hot, not wet and hot. You live in New Orleans. But we have uh, journal entries describing this very room that we are in as wall-to-wall -wall tuberculosis patients. Uh, the ladies who ran our boarding house would be tending to these sick guests. So not only were they the head of the household, they were also playing the role of nurse, taking care of the people staying here. So if you look behind me here, you can see our coquina walls. The coquina behind the lime wash here is actually pushing the lime off. That's totally natural. That's what coquina does. Because it's excavated from the ground, it's a living, breathing thing. Water comes in and water comes out. We learned the hard way in the 1970s trying to preserve this coquina. We actually added a latex paint over top of it, which closed in those pores, preventing it from breathing. What that did was had a mold build up inside the coquina, and it actually started destroying our walls. Fortunately, we realized the error of our ways and pulled all that latex paint off about 10 years later. Since then, we've been trying to recover our coquina and get it back to its original form. And the way to do that is the same way they did it back in the colonial days, which is adding coats of lime wash to it. Every seven years, you add more, and it'll just continually push off those layers. You add more to it, and it keeps your coquina fresh and preserved underneath it so future generations can come and enjoy our house. So this room here is modeled after what a room would look like if an officer was staying here in our boarding house. The ladies who ran our house would offer up free room and board to an officer. It was seen as sort of hiring protection. Uh, while we were a boarding house, it was the peak of the Seminole Wars, so you never really knew what was going to happen. But having trained professionals staying in your boarding house was sort of a way to protect yourselves. Given our location, uh right by the water we would have had a good amount of ship captains staying with us. Of course, mosquito netting, um, as we touched on, many um, diseases at the time were coming from mosquitoes, so just a way to keep our guests safe as they slept here. And then, of course, everybody's favorite under each and every bed is the chamber pot. Of course, that was the only option at the time, uh, but luckily, being an upscale boarding house, we would have someone clear that out um, regularly. <laughs> So while we don't have any original furniture, of course we have our original structure here. Now one of the main components of the original structure is our staircase that you see here. These are all original steps to our boarding house except the bottom one here. 
We had to replace this one after a hurricane in 2005, I believe. But as we walk up these steps, you'll notice you don't hear any creaking or cracking, considering a 223-year-old staircase. That's pretty impressive. The main reason for that is the wood they built the stairs out of is called heart pine. It's an incredibly dense wood. It's actually the marrow of a pine tree. It takes approximately 30 years to grow a single inch of it but it's incredibly durable stuff and the biggest benefit to using it is termites refuse to eat it. We use coquina to make all of our walls. Uh, naturally mined right over there on Anastasia Island. You dig up these large brick or large chunks of fossilized beach essentially, lay them out in the sun for about five years. While that's out in the sun, the water evaporates out of it, leaving behind this shell porous-like material. You then carve your bricks, then use it to build your walls. And if you know our fort, then you're familiar with coquina. It's an incredibly strong material. And yeah, it's one of the main reasons St. Augustine is still here today is that. So this section of the house was completely off limits to uh, the guests. It was really just an area for the particular owner at the time to kind of wind down after a long night. Uh, probably some music would have been played. Of course, they didn't have the same entertainment uh, sources we have today. So this is a spinet piano. It's not fully original, but funny enough, it was actually working until about 10 to 15 years ago, but now the time and of course the humidity has gotten the best of it. This was done by a man named Daniel Whitehurst, who was the son of our property manager, Eliza Whitehurst, who lived in the room right next door. Um, so when it, you know, we've all kind of made our guesses as to why he did this, we really are not too sure. But for us, it's such an amazing piece of history to be able to look at every single day and just let alone know that this window has survived all that time. The last owner of the boarding house, Miss Louisa Facio, is pictured right here. Uh, we get the name Jimenez Facio from our, our first owner, um, Andre Jimenez, who we discussed on the bottom floor. And then right here is Miss Luisa. Uh, with the fortune that she received from her father's plantation, she was eventually able to buy the boarding house that we are in here today. Uh, she is one of the main reasons for our high-end reputation. Uh, Luisa worked here all the way until the 1870s. Following her death was right around the time Henry Flagler started building his resorts, which was the official end to the boarding house period here in St. Augustine. Uh, we also uh, do paranormal investigations on our property. Of course, being over 222 years old, we have had a few deaths uh, here. I think we have 15 documented. Most of them were uh, caused by yellow fever, tuberculosis, things like that. Um, but this is a section of the house that we do a lot of our paranormal investigation, and we have had a lot of activity in this room. Luckily, I'm someone that isn't too scared to be in the house at night, but this is the one room when I'm here alone and I'm closing up, I make sure I'm not making eye contact with the dolls. I just get out of here, lock it up, and move on. <laughs> this room in particular is modeled after or what I've been told is a frail ladies room. It'd be an elderly single woman who'd come to stay at the boarding house based on doctor's recommendations. Not to get dark, but this would be their final destination on their trip. Many of the people staying here knew they would not be returning up north. Uh, because we had a large timber industry here in Florida, getting fresh wood to build a coffin was also difficult at times. It was expensive. So a lot of the people traveling from up north ended up bringing timber with them to construct their own coffins. We are currently standing in what we are currently referring to as our room in transition. A couple of months ago we had it set up for our women's history and currently we're doing a little bit of an exhibit on Florida tourism, but we are constantly having new exhibits uh, come in here. In the next few months we have an exhibit coming about the fashion of the time, uh, mostly Miss Louisa who again was our last boarding house owner. Uh, so we're really switching things out in here, uh, always something new but definitely a fun area of the home. 
So welcome to our third floor at the museum. Uh, this was the main area where any enslaved people uh, living here would have slept. Um, at any given point, we really are not sure how many enslaved people would have been on property because many of our guests would have come with their own enslaved people, but it would have been an area where we would store luggage that guests came with as well as additional uh, pieces of furniture. But right down here, you'll see our mattresses, which were filled with Spanish moss, and those would have just been pulled out um, every single night. You would find a place to sleep. And of course, as I'm sure you could tell, as soon as we walked up the steps, it did get a lot warmer up here. Um, so definitely not the best conditions. Although this probably was a little bit better than the other area the enslaved people uh, working in the kitchen would have slept in. That is right above our kitchen, uh, which had a beehive oven kept on 24 hours a day, basically seven days a week. So you're going to sleep right on top of that oven. Definitely not the best situation. This is my personal favorite area of the entire property here. Uh, we try and grow everything based on historical documents that we have here from our archeological digs. So for the most part, what you see here behind me are based on things that we know were grown here during the time period that we were a boarding house. Uh, we pretty much use everything we grow. Whatever we don't eat, we try and give out to our neighbors. If you visit in July, you'll see our fig tree here, which is estimated to be around 150 years old. July is when our fig tree fruits. So the entire month we have fresh figs coming in. Um, I actually climb up there and pick them and we save them to make jam out of them. This is actually the only freestanding Coquina kitchen left in St. Augustine, and it is one of three properties with a remaining beehive oven, which is what you're going to see right over there. Uh, this is, without a doubt, one of the most important areas or was for our boarding house. As we mentioned before, um, we would have nine course meals served every single day, and those meals would be prepared right in here. As I mentioned, it's basically the equivalent of Thanksgiving, and when you're taking into account that they are doing it on a completely open fire, um, it is incredible to think about. Uh, we also have a few objects for babies, a crib and things like that uh, in here, because many of our enslaved people who would work in this section of the house would have children here. So on top of, you know, making all of those meals, take into account there were babies crying, obviously a very hot and stressful area, but very important to the boarding house. It was built obviously away from the rest of the house because most fires would break out in a kitchen. Um, and yeah, we are the only one that is still remaining to this day.